Welcome to a quantitative aptitude video on averages from careerright.com. The problems on averages are extremely important for placement test, bank, MBA and all other entrance exams. In every exam you can definitely find at least two averages sums. Being easily solvable, you can use them to increase your scores. In this video we are going to show you some very easy tricks to quickly solve all questions from this topic. After this video, you can go to careerright.com which has 1000 plus practice questions on quantitative aptitude and take the practice test over there. Let's get started. Let's start with the average formula. Now, before going on to the formula directly, let us try to derive it or understand first what exactly average is. By this, you will be able to easily tackle all the sums as well as remember the formula very easily and quickly recollect it in the exams. Now, let us say, uh, what. let's go on first with what does average means. Average is nothing but equitable distribution, okay? equitable distribution what does that mean that means if you have say uh, 100 rupees okay if you have 100 rupees and there are say five children right five children and you want to divide 100 rupees equally among five children what you would do you will simply give 20 20 rupees to each child okay so each child gets 20 20 rupees equitable distribution this total comes out to be 100 right this is nothing but average. So what you can say is that 100 rupees, all the five children get 20, 20, 20, 20 rupees. Okay, each one gets same amount of rupees. So the average of money, okay, average amount with each child is nothing but 20 rupees. This is uh, an example of average. We'll go on to more examples and the idea will become clearer. But you just need to remember that average is nothing but equitable distribution. Okay, let's go on to another uh, example that would make the idea more clearer. Let us say there is a family which has a dad, okay, there is the mom, then there is the son and then there is the daughter, okay, right? Now, the dad has 100 rupees, the mother has 200 rupees, the son has 25 rupees and the daughter has 75 rupees with them. Now, what should we do first? Let us say if we take a box and collect all this money in the box. So how much money would be there in the box? 100 plus 200 would be 300, 325 plus 75 is 400. So now in the box there is rupees 400, right? 400 rupees. Now if I want to distribute this equally among all these four members, how much should each get? Dad will get 100 rupees, mother will get 100 rupees because that would be nothing but 400 divided by since there are four members. So divided by 4, 400 is the total amount of money, right, with all the 4. And 4 is nothing but the total number of family members. So 100 rupees each. So each one must get 100 rupees. So son gets 100 rupees, daughter gets 100 rupees, right? All 4 of them have received the equal amount, right, 100 rupees. So this is nothing but average. The average amount with each person would be 100. Now. Did you see how did we calculate this 100 value? We simply added all the monies, okay, with each, uh, added all the amounts with each of the person, okay. This becomes the sum and we divided it by the total number of persons, right. This is nothing but the formula for average. Average is nothing but sum of all the observations, okay. Observations means sum of all these values and divided by total number of values or total family members total members here there are four members dad then there's the mother then there's a son and the daughter so four members are there so right now over here we have four total members right total values are four and how sum sum means how much value does each of them have dad has 100 mother has 200 son has 25 daughter has 75 so addition would be 400 so Average comes out to be 100. What is this 100? 100 means on an average, if we calculate the average amount of money with each person, then it comes out to be 100 rupees. 
so this 100 okay this is the average amount of money with each person in the family right see how easily we calculated average there's nothing to it just uh, add all the values that is nothing but the sum and divided by total number of values so how to remember average formula average is nothing but sum upon total sum upon total this is the only thing you want you should remember and this will solve all the sums related to average there's nothing to it average means equitable distribution and average is nothing but add everything divided by the total number of members or total number of things right now say if they say a person there's a batsman okay there's a batsman he is playing okay he has played say 20 matches and in each match he scored some runs and the total amount of runs which he scored is say uh, 750 right so this sum which is there that is addition of each match that we already have 750 and total number of matches we already have 20 so what would be the average of the batsman what you will do 750 divided by 20 right so average would be 750 divided by 20 75 by 2 that is 357.5 runs per match that becomes the average of the batsman Cric uh, cricket innings or anything these are also favorite types of sums which are asked in averages right so just remember averages equitable distribution and average is nothing but sum divided by total this is very easy formula we'll see how to apply it in all the sums and once you go through this video entirely you will be very much confident regarding averages sums and you will be able to solve uh, all the types of average sums okay now after this what you should remember is one very very small concept and that is nothing but total sum or sum what it is we'll see okay now we have seen what exactly average is. Average is nothing but equitable distribution. Also we saw the formula for average that is nothing but the sum of all observations divided by total number of observations. Then what is total sum? Total sum is nothing but this. Sum can be written as average into total number of observations, right? We just take it over here and multiply. This is nothing but total sum see how easy it is this concept will help you solve almost 80 percent of averages sums because most of the sums that are asked nowadays in exams are uh, easily solvable through this total sum concept we'll see some examples over here right now that would help you clarify this concept of total sum and how to use it and what exactly it means now over here let us say there are uh, five people one two three four and five let us say one has uh, rupees 150, two has rupees 100, three has rupees 50, four has rupees 200 and fifth one has say rupees 1000. Okay, so how much total money or uh, does all these do these all these five people have? Okay, that would be 150 plus 100, 200 plus 50, uh, sorry 150 plus 100 is 250 plus 50 is 300 plus 200 is 500 plus 1000 that is nothing but 1500 rupees let's see 150 200 400 500 yes 1500 rupees okay total amount of money with these five people okay together is rupees 1500 this is nothing but the total sum say if they have given ages of say three people one two and three if they have given ages like 15 25 and say 40 okay then what is the total ages or total sum of ages of all the three people 15 plus 25 is 40 40 plus 40 is 80 80 years right say they have given uh, say if they say that a batsman is playing for say seven innings okay one two three four five six seven if a batsman is playing for seven innings okay batsman plays for seven innings and each inning he scores like one run 10 runs 15 runs two, uh, 12 runs two runs three runs and five runs so what is the total amount of runs the batsman has scored 10 plus 11 10 plus 1 is 11 plus 15 26 38 40 43 48 runs so this is the 
total sum of runs so you understood what exactly the total sum concept is it is nothing but the addition now addition right that is nothing but the sum now sum, not every sum in not in every sum will directly have all these values and we just add them okay here we added them because we had those values but not in every sum we'll have that so whenever such sums come where there is uh, where such values are not given there how to find total sum very easily by this formula or the way the formula of average both these formulas are same we need total sum in such sums where all these individual values are not given simply take the average multiply it by total number of people or the total number of innings or total uh, number of members family members something like that and you'll get the total sum of ages or total sum of in uh, runs or total sum of uh, say monies or the amount which is there right that so easily very easily we can get the total sum now why do we do that average into total because we have learned that equitable distribution means average average means equitable distribution so total number of members if you multiply by average that means that each member gets this much amount for example here it is 15 right 1500 is there total number of members is how much 5 so what is the average amount of money with each member 300 rupees right so if there is 150 150 200 and 1000 and say if there are these five, uh, five people if there are other five people one two three four and five and each one is given 300 rupees still the total sum would come out how much 300 plus 300 plus 300 five times that would be 1500 only see so average which is there if it is average amount of money if it is equitably distributed one two three four five each one getting average amount of money 300 300 300 we get the proper sum right this is same as this this is same as this right so you need to remember that whenever you want to find total sum you just have to take the average multiplied with the total number of members you this is not a separate formula this is the same as the formula of average you are just taking this on the left hand side and multiplying there is nothing different you just have to remember one formula for averages there is no two formulas there is only one formula for average and only remember the concept that only remember two concepts that first one is average is nothing but sum upon total number of a sum of observations upon total number of observations and other concept is generally try to find total sum now let us see when to find total sum and when to use the formula directly okay now moving on to the first question knowing that vijay's expenditure for the first three days is rupees 100 rupees 125 rupees 85 what is his fourth day expenditure as his four days average expenditure is rupees 90 now we know average is nothing but sum upon total right this is the formula now what is exactly total total is nothing but total number of observations here they have given that four days average we need uh, they have given four days average okay and first three days expenditure they have given and we have to find the fourth day expenditure so total number of days are nothing but four right so average would be sum upon total number of days that is four now let us see what exactly would be the sum now the first day second day third day and fourth day first day vijay spends 100 rupees second day vijay spends 125 rupees third day vijay spends 85 rupees fourth day we do not know so what is the total what is the sum of all these plus plus this is 225 plus 230 plus 80 that would be 310 plus question mark this is the sum right so let's have 310 plus question mark now what they've given is that his four days average expenditure is 90 so they've given the average so 90 is 310 plus question mark divided by 4 right so what will we get 4 into 90 is 360 equal to 310 plus question mark question mark equal to 50 rupees so on the fourth day okay question mark is nothing but this fourth day on the fourth day Vijay spends rupees 50 only see how easily with the formula and basic concept of addition and getting the sum we solve this uh, we solve the numerical okay moving on to next question question number two 
what will be average price of all the goods bought if Ajay buys 30 erasers for rupees 3 each, 35 chocolates for rupees 10 each and 25 clips at the rate of rupees 4 each. Okay. Now over here again what we see this is very easy average is nothing but sum upon total. Now what total number of observations? What is this total number? Total number is nothing but the amount of goods bought. What did he buy? He bought 30 erasers plus 35 chocolates plus 25 clips. So what is, what is the total 65 plus 570, 20, 90 articles, 90 goods were bought by him. What do we have to find? We have to find the average price, right? That is nothing but the cost. So we have to find average price which is there. We have one element that is T. Now what we need to find is the sum of everything. Now what is sum? Since this is the number of goods, this has to be price. Okay, the cost, this has to be the cost, then only we will get cost over here, average price over here. Now what Ajay did, how much total money did Ajay spend, how to find it, very easy. Ajay buys 30 erasers for rupees 3 each, that means one eraser, one eraser, the cost of one eraser is rupees 3. So 30 erasers, how much would be the cost, simply 30 into 3 is nothing but rupees 90, right. Now again, one chocolate, cost is rupees 10. So, 35 chocolates, the cost would be rupees 350. Again, over here, one clip, the cost is rupees 4. 25 clips, cost is rupees 25 into 4 is 100. So, how much is the total amount spent by Ajay? How much did Ajay spend? What is the sum of the amount which Ajay spent? 90 plus 350, right? Plus 100 that is 350 plus 100 is 450 plus 90 is 540 rupees. So what would be the average sum divided by total right that gives us 6 rupees. So average price of all the goods bought is 6 rupees understood. See here we all whenever we use formula just find two elements the sum and total number of goods or total number of family members. You will never have the amount or the total price in the denominator as total number of observations that would always be in the numerator. Again the runs scored by a batsman that would be in the numerator but the innings played matches played that would be in the denominator. Always remember that we just need to find the sum and the total number of observations right moving on question number three of the 20 cycles sold by Ajay average cost of 12 cycles is rupees 18,000 in total he earned rupees 3 lakhs what was the average cost of remaining cycles now over here we do not have uh, we know this is an average sum which is average is nothing but sum upon total now we know total that total Ajay sold 20 cycles right so we know total as 20 now we but what the problem here is we do not know the individual values of each cycle for what price did Ajay sold Ajay sell each of the cycle so finding total sum over here becomes little bit difficult but if you look carefully we can simply use another way to find the total sum which we have learnt at the start that is nothing but sum is nothing but average into total right now do we know average for 20 cycles no we do not know but what do we know average cost of 12 cycles is rupees 18,000 so let us calculate over here for 12 cycles okay this is for 12 cycles what is the average cost for 12 cycles 18,000 what does that mean that means that Ajay sold 12 cycles right and he collected some money okay uh, let the amount be x y z some money he collected okay rupees x y z he collected some money and if he saw that whatever the money is there average amount of uh, average money collected for each cycle is nothing but rupees 18,000 that means each cycle if sold for 18,000 he'll get this much money so he sort of sold every cycle for 18,000 rupees these 12 cycles he sold for 18,000 rupees so how much total money did he earn by these 12 cycles very easy you know the average 18,000 over here 
let's write it over here as a separate calculation. Okay, sum is average. Average is nothing but eighteen thousand multiplied by total. Total cycles are twelve. So how much you will get? You will get over here two hundred and sixteen two lakh sixteen thousand rupees. So this is the amount of money he earned by selling twelve cycles, right? So this is the total sum for twelve cycles. How much did he totally earn? He earned three lakh rupees totally. Okay, this is the total of twenty cycles, right? Twelve cycles. He uh, for twelve cycles. You will write over here for twelve cycles. He earned two lakh sixteen thousand rupees. For twenty cycles, he earned three lakh rupees. So you should see that remaining eight cycles which are there. Okay, for how much did they sell? Okay, how much money was collected by selling those remaining eight cycles? Three lakh minus two lakh sixteen, right? Three lakh minus two lakh sixteen thousand. That is nothing but eighty four thousand. So by selling these remaining eight cycles, Ajay collected eighty four thousand rupees. So this is nothing but the sum for eight cycles. This is nothing but total number of cycles, right? So what is the average for the remaining cycles? That is average for the eight cycles is sum of eight cycles upon total. That is eighty four thousand upon number of cycles eight. That is nothing but eight ones are. Eight zero five zero zero rupees ten thousand five hundred is the average cost of remaining cycles. Look, we'll go through this once again. This is very very easy. You might feel that this is confusing or something like that, but it is not very easy. Take a look at this because once you understand this concept over here, you can use it very easily in the other sums because this is very useful. Okay, now. What happens is that Ajay has twenty cycles. Out of that, he first sells twelve cycles, and he gets some money. And when he calculates, he realizes that these twelve cycles, whatever he has earned from these twelve cycles, on an average, for these twelve cycles, for each cycle, he has received eighteen thousand rupees. On an average, he might have sold one cycle for say twenty thousand, other cycle for say eleven thousand only. But when you calculate the average, that average comes out to be eighteen thousand for Ajay for these. Twelve cycles only. Okay, then he say, oh, oh, "What does Ajay do? Ajay also sells the remaining eight cycles, and in total, Ajay earns three lakh rupees." Now we know averages sum total sum upon total number of cycles. We know total number of cycles as twenty, but we do not know the average amount for each cycle or what is the average price for each cycle. We do not know that. So. Let's see what do we know. We know that for twelve cycles, the average price is eighteen thousand, right? So how much total money did Ajay earn through these twelve cycles? Very easily we can count, calculate that is total sum is nothing but average into total number of cycles. Average is eighteen thousand. Total number of cycles is twelve. So Ajay earns two lakh sixteen thousand from twelve cycles. Okay, from twelve cycles, Ajay earns two lakh sixteen thousand. But we know that when Ajay sells twenty cycles, he earns three lakh rupees. So for twelve cycles, Ajay earns two lakh sixteen thousand. For twenty cycles, Ajay earns three lakh rupees. So remaining eight cycles which are there to make twenty, twelve, two lakh sixteen. So remaining eight cycles which are there, how much did Ajay in earn in that three lakh minus two lakh sixteen thousand? That is nothing but eighty four thousand, right? So eighty four thousand were earned by Ajay for these eight cycles. So total sum for eight cycles is eighty four thousand. Total number of cycles is eight. So what is the average of the remaining eight cycles? Sum upon total eighty four thousand upon eight. That is nothing but ten thousand five hundred, right? So moving on to next sum. Question number four. Without considering the salary of the boss, the average salary reduces by rupees one thousand. What will be salary of the boss if average salary of eleven employees and their boss is rupees eighteen thousand? Again, over here we do not know individual salaries, so uh, it is much better to find the total sum. How to find the total sum? We know a formula for average is sum upon total, so total sum is nothing but average into total. Now we know how many how many people are there. What is what they have given in uh, over there in the second sentence is that. Average salary of eleven employees and the boss is rupees eighteen thousand. So eighteen thousand is the average. Now how many people are there? Eleven employees plus 
their boss so that would be 12 people so average for 12 people is 18,000 so what is the total sum of salary or the total sum of money right for 12 people 18,000 into 12 so what that what would that be uh, be 1 lakh 80,000 is 10 plus 36 216 okay 2 lakh 16 thousand rupees is the total salary or the total sum for how many people this is for 12 people right now what they say in the first sentence without considering the salary of the boss so if you exclude the salary of the boss average salary reduces by rupees 1000 average salary for 12 people that is 11 people plus the boss is 18,000 if you do not consider the boss number of people would be only 11 right 12 minus 1 boss is one person so 12 minus 1 is 11 salary average salary reduces by 1000 so 18,000 minus 1000 that is nothing but 17,000 so average salary for 11 people is 17,000 right for the 11 employees it is 17,000 so what is the total amount of money or for these 11 people okay Sal total amount of salary okay total sum of salary for these 11 people would be average into total total people are 11 because we are not considering the boss over here so we have 11 plus the average also has decreased as 1000 over here please remember right so what we will get 11 7 za 77 11 1 plus 7 is 1 lakh 87 thousand right this is the salary of total sum of salary of 11 employees because we are not considering the boss over here and this is the total salary total sum of salary of 11 employees plus boss right see we simply have to subtract this from this to get the boss salary okay 11 people plus boss minus the 11 people will give us the boss salary so 2 lakh 16000 minus 1 lakh 87000 would give us the salary of the boss this is 16 by 7 9 okay 0 10 minus 8 is 2 29000 is the salary of the boss right see how total sum concept which is there it was used to solve this uh, numerical which had nothing in it only average and total number of observations was given we use the total sum concept and solve the sum moving on Question number 5. Average age of 5 people is 42 years. Another group has 8 people who have average age of 81 years. When both groups are mixed, what is average age of all people? Again, another sum related to total sum. Okay, another numerical which is related to total, total sum. We know average is nothing but sum upon total number of observations right over here do we know the total number of observations they have asked they have asked average age of all people all people means both the groups are added first group had five people second group have eight people so total number of people are 13 these are 13 people this is nothing but t we have the value of t do we have the value of sum of all the third ages of all the 13 people no so let's see what exactly we have okay we know average is sum upon total so total sum is nothing but average into total number of observations right now what they have given is that average age of 5 people is 42 years so average age for 5 people is 42 years that is nothing but sum of ages of all the 5 people divided by total number of people we know the average as 42 sum of ages of 5 people we do not know and total number of people are 5 okay sum of the ages of these 5 people is 42 into 5 is 210 years similarly average age for 8 people they have given some of the ages of these 8 people divided by total number of people average age is given as 81 years some of the ages we do not know total number of people are 8 so some of the ages of all these 8 people is 81 into 8 648 years right so now we have some of the ages of 5 people and some of the ages of 18 people we have 13 people over here 13 is nothing but 5 a group of 5 people plus group of 8 people so 5 plus 8 is 13 so if we want sum of the ages of 13 people that is same as sum of the ages of 5 people plus sum of the ages of 8 people 
right so that is nothing but 210 plus 648 that would give us 858 years so this is our value for s we have the value for t we have the value for s let's find out the average average would be 858 divided by 13 that is the total number of people that is 13 into 6 is 78 right again 7 78 66 years so average age of all the people when both the groups are mixed is 66 years right moving on question number six three boxes have some average weight when one box which weighs 89 kg is replaced by another box the average weight increases by 5 kg how much the new box weighs now this might look like a very uh, different or a difficult sum but actually it is not a very small and easy concept goes into solving such kind of sums pay attention to the concept because this is very important uh, and as well as easy so, and this concept will help you solve almost 50 to 60 percent of average sums because they are asked in of because 50 to 60 percent average sums are asked by of this format okay now uh, let's take a small example okay to explain what the sum is saying let us assume that there are three boxes one two and three and let us assume that the average weight of these three boxes is w kgs so what does this mean if the average weight of three boxes is w kgs that means each box weight must be w w and w right w kg w kg w kg now let us assume there are other three boxes one two and three and average weight of these three boxes is w plus 5 kg or uh, what we can say it is five more than the previous weight so 5 kg more than the previous weight that is nothing but w plus 5 kg right uh, so what will be the individual weights of the boxes w plus 5 kg w plus 5 kg and w plus 5 kg so what does this mean if the average increases average increases by 5 kgs then individual weights also increase by 5 kgs did you see over here it was www when average became w plus 5 kg it became w plus 5 w plus 5 and w plus 5 right now if initially this condition is there and finally this condition is there then what does that mean say uh, let us assume that this is box number three and we are replacing it with a new box this box right this box new box a new box we are replacing it with a new box so what should be the weight of this new box let us see what should be the new weight of this new box now in this new box makes the average w plus 5 when the average becomes w plus 5 there is a increase of plus 5 plus 5 and plus 5 right so initially these two box uh, now in the final stage also these two boxes are the same so their weights has to remain same so this remains same this remains same right same same what changes so this increase which is there plus 5 plus 5 who will compensate for that increase this is nothing but the new box the new box that means should have this increase of plus 5 for the first box this increase of plus 5 for the second box plus this increase of plus 5 for itself and plus the original weight now since we are replacing 3 okay box number 3 which has an weight of w with another box that is new box we do not know its weight what does it should have it should have this weight w plus it should have this increase in weight plus it should have this increase in weight right all these three things should be compensated by this new box so the new box so over here in this what we have this third box has a weight of 89 kgs right they have given this is not the average please remember this is the individual weight we are removing this box okay we are removing this box we are putting in a new box and this new box will have what it does it do it increases the average since it is increasing the average that means it is adding weight so the new box weight has to be greater than old box weight so what does the weight what should be the weight of new box it should be 89 that is original box weight plus it should compensate for this increase of 5 right because average increases are by 5 for the first box increase of 5 for the second box and increase of 5 for the itself also because when average increases by 5 
5 is added to each of the individual weights. So, what would it be? This is nothing but 103 kgs. Okay, it is very easy. You might uh, think that this is difficult and uh, very complicated, but it is not. Again, I'll explain it to you. Now, let us assume there are three boxes. Okay, box 1, box 2, box 3. Now, average weight of these three boxes is W kgs. So, e individual boxes will weigh W kg, W kg, and W kg. Right? Now, suppose take another three boxes 1, 2 and 3 and if their weight is W plus 5 kgs, okay, average weight is W plus 5 kgs, what would be the individual weights W plus 5 kg, W plus 5 kg and W plus 5 kg. Now, let us come to our problem. Let us say that because of replacing one box, the average increases by 5. That means if average initially is W kg, it becomes W plus 5 kg, right? It becomes W plus 5 kg like this. Now, since it becomes W plus 5 kg, what would be the individual weights become? They would become from 1 will go from W to W plus 5, 2 will go from W to W plus 5 and 3 will also go from W to W plus 5. Okay. So, there is an increase of 5, 5 kg in individual weights also. Remember, once average increases, individual weights also increase. But we know that two boxes are the same, only the third box is changed. That means, weight of the two boxes has to be the same that is W and W right W and W. So, this extra weight of 5 kg and 5 kg from where should we compensate it or from where should we get that extra weight? They should get the extra weight from the new box right. So, new box should have the extra weight of 5 kg for box number 1, extra weight of 5 kg for box number 2 and also the extra weight of 5 kg for box number 3 that is itself. And what is the original weight of that box which was replaced? 89. Even that should be compensated because we are removing, we are replacing. So, 89 should be there. So, when we add this, we get 100 kg. So, now when the new box is 103 kg, then only the average increases by 5 kgs. Right? You can even calculate and see it. Now, if they say that the average weight decreases by 5 kg, then here instead of W plus 5, it would be W minus 5 and each of the boxes will have weight w minus 5, w minus 5 and w minus 5 and the th box which is getting replaced say if it is of 89 kg then what would be the weight of the new box it would be 89 minus 5, minus 5 and minus 5 right now but here it is increasing so we need not consider this this is only for information or if some is asked regarding the weight decrease right now over here what we have written we have written plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 we can write it like this also 5 kg for one box for 3 kg is how much 5 in, for 3 boxes 5 kg for increase for one box so for 3 boxes how much increase is there 5 in, 5 kg into 3 boxes that is 15 right 15 kg increase should be there so the weight of new box should be 89 plus 15 that is nothing but 103 kgs both are same right but remember how we expressed it because in some numericals you might have to calculate using this way in some we have to calculate using this way right now moving on to next sum question number seven how old will Raju be if the ratio of his age and one of his twin grandsons is 11 is to 2 and average age of his and his both the grandsons is 50 years again this is a sum of total sum of finding total sum what we know average is nothing but sum upon total right total number of members or total number of people so what is do we know total number of people yes that is three because raju and both his grandsons we know what is the average age of raju and both his grandsons since they are twins okay that is nothing but 50 so what we have 50 equal to sum of the ages of all the three people raju and both his grandson divided by total number of people that is 3. So, sum of the ages of 3 people is 150 years, right? Now, what they are saying is that ratio of Raju's age to one of his twin grandsons. Now, both the grandsons which are there, they are twins actually. So, both will be having same age. So, ratio of one of the twins, uh, twin grandsons is say, let us say G1, one grandson, okay, is nothing but 11 is to 2. G1 is uh, one of the twin grandsons. And G2 would be the other grandson. Ratio of age of Raju to 
one of the grandson is 11 is to 2. Let k be the common factor. So, age of Raju would be 11k. Age of grandson would be 2k. Since they are twins, it would be same as g2. That is the second grandson would also be having the same age 2k. What is the total of their ages? 11k plus 2k plus 2k would be 15k. But we already know the sum of the ages of Raju and his grandsons is 150 years. We have calculated it over here. Okay, equate this, what we get? 15k equal to 150 years. So, k would be 10 years, right? Since k is 10 years, what is the age of Raju? That is 11k, that is 11 into 10, 110 years. See how easily using the concept of total sum, we calculated the answer. Moving to the next question. Question number 8. Had Ajay scored 18 runs more in his third innings and 4 runs more in his seventh innings, his average would have become 66, 66 runs. But it is 64 runs. How many innings did he play? Now, we do not know the number of innings over here. What we know is average is nothing but sum, up, sum of all observations upon total. Now, this is not a tricky sum or a complicated sum. We have to use the same concepts which we have done earlier. And using those only, we will solve this, especially the sum related to uh, increase in weight of three boxes, right? Let us see how to deal with such kind of sums. Now, average is sum of all observations upon total of all observations uh, or total number of observations. So, sum of all observations will be nothing but average into total number of observations. So, sum of all, uh, sum of runs scored in all innings, that is total runs would be same, would be equal to average number of runs per innings multiplied by total number of innings, right? So, let us say n is the total number of innings Ajay played. Now, let us, uh, what is the average for n inning? 64 runs they have given. Now, when he scores 18 more runs in third inning and 4 more runs in seventh inning, then only his average becomes 66. That is an increase of 2, right? So, when he scores 18 plus 4 is equal to 22 more runs Okay, 22 more runs or 22 runs more, then only the average increases. So, increase in runs is 22 runs, but we also know that when average increases by 2, for each inning, there is the addition of 2 runs in each inning. That is, each inning runs or each inning score increases by 2. We saw that if average weight of 3 boxes is W and on changing one box, we get average weight as 5 more, that is W5, 5. That means for each individual box, the weight increases by 5. Same way over here, for each individual inning, the runs increase or the score increases by 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. So, how much is the total increase? We know total number of innings as N. For each inning, the increase is 2. So, N into 2 is nothing but 2 N runs, right? So, 2 N runs is the increase in the total number of runs scored. But we already know that Ajay scores 22 runs more, then only this pos this is be this becomes possible. That is the average increases by 2. That means these 22 runs is nothing but these 2n runs, both are the increase. So, 2n is 22. So, n equal to 11. n is nothing but the number of innings. So, the answer is 11. How many innings did Ajay play? Ajay played 11 innings. Moving on. Question number 9. In a group of people, the oldest and the youngest have an age difference of 100 years. If these two are left out of counting, then the average age of the remaining 40 people is 28. The average age of entire group being 30, how old is the eldest person? Now here, we know average is sum upon total and total sum is nothing but average into total, right? So sum of ages of all the people is nothing but average age of the group multiplied by total number of people in the group. Now, what we know over here, let us, uh, that old age difference between oldest and youngest is 100 years. So, let us assume that the youngest is n years old. So, how much would be the oldest? 100 plus n years, right? Then only the difference between both of them would be 100 years, right? So, this is the youngest, this is the oldest. They have given that if we leave these two out, average age of remaining 40 people is 28. That means if these two are excluded, how many people are left? 
40 people that means total people in the group are 40 plus the youngest plus the oldest that is nothing but 40 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 42 people so 42 people are in the group what is the average age of this group of 42 people 30 that is nothing but sum of the ages of these 42 people divided by total number of people okay so 30 would be equal to do we know the sum of the ages of 42 people no how to calculate what is the total number of people 42 so sum of the ages of 42 people is 42 into 30 that is 1 2 6 0 years now what they have given if you exclude the youngest and the oldest average age of the remaining 40 people is 28 so average age of the remaining 40 people is 28 right that is nothing but sum of the ages of these 40 people divided by total number of people so 28 would be do we know sum of the ages of 40 people no sum of the ages of 40 people upon total number of people are 40 because we are excluding the youngest and the oldest right so sum of the ages of 40 people is 40 into 28 that is 4 to 4 8 za 32 4 2 za 8 plus 3 11 1 1 2 0 years right so sum of the ages of 40 people is 1120 years now sum of the ages of 42 people is nothing but age of youngest plus age of oldest plus sum of the ages of 40 people right so what is the sum of the ages of 40 people this we already know what is the age of youngest n age of oldest 100 plus n plus what is the sum of the ages of 40 people 1120 and all this is equal to this 1260 right sum of the ages of 42 people because this is 40 people this is the 41st person and this is the 42nd person right so 1260 so what we will have over here let's calculate 2n plus this is 1220 right it goes over here 1260 that would be equal to 1260 minus 1220 would be 40 so I will write over here 2 n is equal to 40 n equal to 20. What is the age of oldest person? 100 plus n. Oldest person age is 100 plus n that is 100 plus 20 equal to 120 years. See how easily we have calculated uh, the age of the oldest person. We used only the simple formula of average and total sum. These two concepts help you solve everything. Moving on to next question. Question number 10. A batsman played 11 innings and has a certain average. This average increases by 2 runs when his 3 innings of 32 runs, 33 runs and 34 runs are replaced by 3 other innings. Find the average of these 3 new innings. Now again this is easy one. We have our average formula that is sum upon total. Sum of all the observations is nothing but average into total. So, sum of the total number of runs or the sum of runs scored in all the innings is nothing but average number of runs in one inning into total number of innings, right? The batsman played 11 innings, okay? Now, in these 11 innings, he has some average. Whenever, if three of his innings of, uh, are replaced by three new innings, the average increases by how much? It increases by two runs. Since, it is incre since average is increasing by two runs, each individual inning must increase by 2 runs. So, how much is the total increase? That is nothing but 2 into total number of innings is nothing but 11. That is nothing but 22 runs. Right? So, 22 runs is the increase in the number of runs. This is nothing but the increase. Now, what they say is that the 3 innings, uh, old innings are replaced by 3 new innings. Now, whatever the new innings are there, what must say, they cause the average to increase since they are causing the average to increase what the must they comp uh, compensate for they must compensate for old innings plus they must compensate for the increase in other innings also increase of two two runs in other innings also like we have seen in the weights and boxes right so how much did uh, how much is the old innings score 32 plus 33 plus 34 plus how much is the increase in every inning because of this that is 22 runs so how much will you get over here that is uh, 30 30 30 is 90 plus 20 is 110 
runs so the new three innings which are there new three innings which are there in total they must provide 121 runs so that is nothing but sum of three new innings this is sum of three old innings this is increase in the number of runs in all the 11 innings this is sum of three new innings what is the average of three new innings now sum of three new innings upon total number of innings sum of three new innings is 121 divided by 3 that would give us 41 by 3 runs is nothing but the average of the three new innings see how easily using only one formula and one small concept you can very easily solve almost all sums of averages right with this we come to the end of this video if you like this video please give it a like and share it with your friends you can leave your comments and suggestions for us in the comment box below you can even tell us about any specific videos that you would like us to develop for you we would be rolling out more such videos and tutorials so subscribe to our channel and stay updated